What's going on everyone? Phil here and welcome to KO Gaming. You know, every once in a while a new game comes out that totally revolutionizes the way that games are played and creates an entirely new genre of entertainment. No Man's Sky, with all of its potential and years of hype behind it, sadly, is not that game. Last week, during the launch window of the game, I played it for around 8 hours, and right here on this YouTube channel, I released my initial impressions and an early review after 8 in-game hours of gameplay, outlining some of the things that I both liked and disliked about the game. A lot of people had a lot to say about that video, and I strongly recommend that you check it out before you watch this one. Over the past week, I spent another additional 7.5 hours in No Man's Sky, clocking in at just under 16 total gameplay hours under my belt, and I felt I've now played the game enough where I can give you a full-fledged final review about what I think about this game that tries to take a procedurally generated universe, including galaxy exploration, aerial combat with space pirates, a bunch of crafting for resources, buying, selling, exploration of alien worlds and interaction with alien cultures, and tries to turn it into something concrete and entertaining. I don't think, sadly, that these game developers were successful in their overall mission. Because overall, this game ends up being a buggy, messy, unpolished, unfinished mess. It really does feel like most of the time that you're playing No Man's Sky, that it's the beginnings of an idea. It's the first attempt at something epic that needs to be honed in and tweaked and refined for it to be a complete game. Let's talk a little bit about the foibles of No Man's Sky. First off, when you first start playing No Man's Sky, your major concern is resource management, inventory management, and being able to upgrade and repair all of your equipment constantly. Whether it's your exosuit so you can survive on these alien worlds, whether it's your ships so you can take off and fly and explore between them, or whether it's your multi-tools so that you have better mining capabilities and gathering these resources, or better combat capabilities so you can defend yourself if you happen to get attacked by a creature or a drone. After the first few initial hours of the game, once you figure out how to upgrade your inventory slots and where the best places to get these resources are, the game now kind of opens up and becomes a completely different style experience, which is cool until you start to realize one of the major shortfalls of the game. The promise of No Man's Sky was that it was going to use a unique mathematical formula to procedurally generate a randomly generated world where you could have a planet with different kinds of fauna and flora in different combinations, and that there was going to be a near infinite number of planets, there was no way you could ever visit them all, and it was going to be such a unique and interesting experience to be flying around all these different galaxies and finding all kinds of unique stuff. Unfortunately, that initial promise is never lived up to any time during the game in No Man's Sky. In fact, right now, the sampling of video that I'm showing you is not a trick sample where I tried to specifically weed out certain worlds that looked the same. The bottom line is that because of the random number generation aspect of No Man's Sky, you're gonna get barren worlds and or boring worlds with almost nothing to really look at or check out the vast majority of the time that you're investigating all around space. It's ridiculous. Why would you pay for a game where you're walking around almost completely empty planets? It's not exciting. And in the advertisements and the PR and everything that was pushed down our throats about No Man's Sky over the past several years, we were told, oh, such a wide variety of possibilities. You're gonna see this unique creature you're gonna see this lush world and none of it ever comes to fruition even in the worlds that I landed that had a lot of cool you know foliage and stuff like that it never looked anything like any of the PR or advertisements that were sent out for this game so the only thing I can think of is that it's incredibly rare that you would ever run into that stuff but it's far more common that you're gonna be on a barren boring planet and that's bullshit in addition, all of the alien settlements are exactly the same. Now, I don't mean that they look absolutely identical. They will have some slight variations here and there, but every space station on the inside has the same exact structure, the same exact layout. The only difference is the doors might look slightly different, and the type of alien, of which there's only three kinds of aliens in the entire game, might change 
depending on which part of the universe or galaxy you're in currently. On the planets, the settlements all are pretty much the same. You go through a door, either it opens or you have to blow it up. You go inside, you interact with a terminal, you get an upgrade or two off the wall, maybe you interact with an alien, but it's all the same. They're all these bare bones, randomly generated things that are just completely uninteresting after you've seen them a couple dozen times. And it's sad that they couldn't do anything different. They couldn't have a city. They couldn't have a town. No, it's all just completely barren worlds with tiny little huts and buildings here or there. I mean, it's a no-brainer if you're going through kind of universal exploration, you want to run into other kinds of intelligent life and other civilizations, and outside of these generic space stations and generic little huts and settlements, nothing else ever happens in the game in that regard, and that's pathetic. But there's also the space battles, right? When space pirates come out and try to attack you and steal your cargo, or they're attacking some kind of a freighter and you can come to the rescue by following a distress call. Yeah, it's kind of cool the first couple of times that you do it, until you realize it's more of a time waster or a nuisance than anything else. Half the time when you're out in space, you're trying to gather different resources so that you can upgrade your hyperdrive and you can warp longer distances, or you're trying to increase your shield, you're trying to do something with resource management, and most of the time, you'll be interacted with these pirates when it's the worst possible time. You're running low on resources, you're trying to gather to do an upgrade, here they come! Of course, it's like clockwork, especially when you really are low on resources to replenish your shields, the pirates show up to piss you the fuck off and steal all of your inventory at the worst possible time. It really is just poorly thought out, and after you do it a couple times, you wish the whole aspect of the game was removed so you could get back to the resource and exploration and just say, fuck it, this is so annoying, I don't want to do it anymore. So really, once you get the handle of all of these constant kinds of things that are always going on, now you have to decide what do you want to do on your playing No Man's Sky? Do you just want to go out there and explore freeform for yourself? Do you want to try to get closer to the center of the universe, which seems to be this kind of looming waypoint in the distance? Or do you want to follow the path of Atlas? Well, for all intents and purposes, my first eight hours, I pretty much just explored wherever I wanted to, going through black holes and exploring alien worlds, to the point where I said, man, this is getting repetitive and boring. I I think I should probably follow the path of Atlas and see what happens. Now, every time that you visit one of those Atlas interfaces, you're given what's called an Atlas Stone. In addition, you'll receive some upgrades, maybe some warp fuel, and you'll learn a bunch of alien words. So they actually end up being some pretty good destinations when you first start finding them. The bottom line is there's 10 of them. That's it. There's 10 Atlas interfaces in the entire game that you can visit, and each one will give you an Atlas Stone. Now, if you're exploring Freeform like I was early on, you may not have no idea what these Atlas Stones are for. The game gives you absolutely no idea what they're for either, so I ended up selling one for a ton of money and then using that to buy more inventory slots and do more of the, more of the things that the game seemed to be steering you towards at its core gameplay elements. Well, about... Seven or eight hours into my playthrough, I said, I'll start trying to go after this Atlas Interfaces again. And eventually, around the very end of my gameplay, at the end of around 15 and a half hours, I got to the last interface. Well, guess what happened? The game said, oh, you should have saved all your Atlas Stones, because if you had 10, you could create a star. And that was the end goal of the Atlas Interfaces. Not that the game ever fucking told you that, so 9 times out of 10, I'm sure people probably would sell their Atlas Stones because the game's telling you to improve your inventory, get these resources, do these upgrades, and you don't even know what they're for. You're thinking, gee, maybe they're a rare asset to buy and sell, then come to find out after so long of following this Atlas path that you wasted your time because you sold one of the stones. Now, you can get another Atlas Stone. You have to randomly encounter an alien that has it in their inventory, which, by the way, they sell it for some insane amount of credits, like 500,000 or more, it's absolutely ridiculous. So I got pissed off and just basically didn't give a crap about the Atlas interface anymore when this happened, but I did find out that if you do create that star, all it does is create a randomly generated star in this open world No Man's Sky universe that you don't know where it is, you never see it, and has no impact on anything. So following the Atlas interfaces, one of the major reasons to play the game is completely pointless. 
Alright, so what about the other goal, reaching the center of the universe, right? Well, either if you put in a ridiculous amount of time to actually get to the entire center of the universe, or if you find upgrades through random luck, that's right, because all of the upgrades in the game are based off of a random number generator, so one person might find the best warp upgrades and get to the center of the universe within 10 hours, while another person could play for 40 and never get the upgrade needed to get there quickly. I obviously disagree with that kind of gameplay mechanic, but whatever. Once you get to to the center of the universe, guess what? There's nothing there. The game just resets and sends you back to the beginning, claiming that it's a brand new galaxy that you can now explore. It's completely a time waster. There's no ending. There's no end to the journey. There's no big payoff. There's not even a piece of narrative. It's just basically saying, fuck you. You paid us 60 bucks and wasted all this time trying to get through our open, empty fucking universe just to get to the center, and there's nothing here. It's the ultimate insult to someone who put up with the boring, repetitive gameplay of this game at length just to get there and find out it was all just a waste of your time. Now here's the thing folks, I fully understand that there are gamers out there who aren't like me and that might like a game like No Man's Sky. They enjoy the fact that the game doesn't hold your hand and give you detailed tutorials on what everything was in the game so that feeling of exploration and discovery is actually a positive one for you. And there's some people who aren't looking for a huge narrative based experience or really any meaning to anything that they do in games. They just get hooked on this repetitive gameplay and they just want to play it at length. I get that. But even at face value, as an obje objective reviewer who has to say, I understand subjectively I may not like what this game is, objectively, this game is a broken mess, as I'm about to tell you about. First of all, I've already mentioned the random number generator mechanic of this game, where some people will get loot before others, and sometimes you'll get a great piece of loot that will allow you to do awesome stuff, like maybe walk on a planet you couldn't before because the environment was too harsh, or maybe you'll get a better multi-tool that's really awesome and has more slots, or maybe you'll get that very sought-after upgraded warp, so that instead of just warping from one cluster to another cluster, you can jump 20 to 30 light years at a jump, so I actually heard the highest level one could jump like 1600 light years with one warp which is pretty damned far but guess what the inventory system of the game is bugged there were times during my gameplay of no man's sky that i earned a high level upgrade that i had been seeking for quite a long time and it completely vanished it would claim i had it but then when i went to see if i could install it in my ship it acted like I had never collected it before. And to make matters worse, I ended up getting that item again later on, but again, it wouldn't show up. So actually, in my experience playing No Man's Sky, I could never get to the center of the universe because the game wouldn't allow me to install the biggest, highest level warp engine in my ship because of a game bug. That's fucking insane bullshit. Not only is the game incredibly boring and repetitive, barren, but then if I put up with your bullshit grinding gameplay formula, and I finally get the big sought after upgrade, you're gonna fucking take it away from me after all that time that I invested in the game? Wow, is that an unfinished buggy piece of crap. In addition to that, the physics of the game are completely screwed up. I've heard horror stories of people whose ships started you know, not landing properly and ended up being like suspended in air and you couldn't get to them properly. I've seen columns of uh, minerals that you try to mine and all of a sudden for some reason the rock is floating? I mean, you're kidding me? In a game from 2016 that charges full retail price, you couldn't put gravity and physics into this game so when you're mining the rocks will fall and maybe provide even some kind of a hazard? I mean, I played games eight plus years ago that had some kind of basic physics that are left out of No Man's Sky. It's absolutely fucking laughable that this game is being sold at a full retail price. Everything about this game feels like the beginning stages of a game, an early alpha, an idea at a game that's going to be expanded upon in the future, yet Unbelievably, this is being sold for full retail price as if it's complete. It's a fucking ripoff. And so, undoubtedly, No Man's Sky is going to end up being another one of those gaming asterisks in the annals of history. A game that had massive potential, that could have changed the face of gaming with a unique kind of aspect. But sadly, I hate to say it, it's a great idea that was executed incredibly poorly. If anything, what I should say is this. Hello Games should sell their technology, their mathematical procedural generation formula, 
to a game studio who has more experience, more financial backing, better means to create a game where this formula can be implemented and tied in with characters, with story, with functional gameplay mechanics, with things that would make a universe feel like it's populated and vibrant and fun rather than barren and boring and repetitive and a waste of your time. Imagine if this formula were tied into a game like Mass Effect, or imagine if a game like Destiny, outside of its repetitive team-based shooting, had a universal exploration and resource management aspect like this. That would be effing amazing, right? But the problem is, this game just tries to sell you this mathematical procedural generation formula as a game at face value, and it's not. If anything, what this showed is that the brains behind Hello Games are very intelligent, but they're not street smart. They get the book smarts stuff. They know that they can make a cool, unique thing, but they don't know how to translate that into a tangible game that a person would actually want to play. I've met people like this before who are highly and incredibly intelligent, but they can't relate that to the real world, and that's the major problem with No Man's Sky. It's an attempt to take a a lofty ideal and turn it into something entertaining and it fails miserably. Overall, No Man's Sky is an empty, messy, unfinished, boring, waste of time, rip-off experience and in my opinion, the best way to describe this game is either the ultimate time waster or the ultimate spin your wheels game. Meaning you can spend an infinite amount of time in this game exploring and crafting and gathering and flying and fighting pirates and gathering words and getting towards the unique center of the universe and blah blah yada yada, but it all is for nothing. It all means nothing. And that's the major problem with the game. If anything, I think the people who would really enjoy No Man's Sky are people who zone out when they play games. Maybe you've got a television playing on the side. Maybe you're watching something else from the internet on another screen while you're playing the game. That's the kind of game No Man's Sky is. People who stream on Twitch and love interaction with their stream chat, this is your game, man, because you could just be playing this and not paying any attention while you're talking with other people and having way more fun now. That way but as a $60 retail release at its core face value this game is probably worth $15 at best for what is in it and for how buggy messy and unfinished it is I give No Man's Sky a 4 out of 10 score. That's my final review. I'm not playing this game anymore because I'm bored to tears and I've got far more productive things to do with my time. And that is it for my review of No Man's Sky. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like here on YouTube and consider sharing it with your friends so that other people can check it out as well. Also, please check out my video description where you can find a bunch of cool links, including one to my raw gameplay of No Man's Sky so you can see my experiences firsthand, as well as a link to a Loot Crate discount code for any new subscription over on LootCrate.com, as well as a link to my Patreon where your pledges can allow me...